Welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 130. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the incredible James Cork. The incredible James Cork. Yeah. Is that how you're going to call me from now on? Well, um, Twilight's not here, so... Yeah. I'm going to have to kill you. Why? Because it's, 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 easier, to, it's easier than trying to ignore you. <laughs> I, after I got the signed autograph cover for the Applejack Rarity... Uh, Friends Forever with Andy Price's signature on it. After all that, really? Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. I will wait until you ship it to me, and then I will kill you. Yeah, you, 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 you need. <laughs> I to... will send. I will send my assassins in, in your general direction. <laughs> well, you, you still need to give me your address so I can ship with you. Aha! No, I know what you're trying to do here. You're trying to find where I live so you can send me your assassins before I can send you my assassins. <laughs> No shipping then? I have revealed your... No, I don't want to be shipped with you. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. No, I got all. other fan fiction. Oh, God, no. Uh, anywho, well, uh, we, uh, we, we can plan out the shipping details later and assassination plat- plot later. Um, next up, we got Rom. Hey, Rom. Hello, all you happy people on the internet. Hey, how are you <laughs> Happy people on the internet. That's funny. <laughs> so, how have you been doing, man? Awesome, I'm doing great. I am smashing rocks with my bare hands. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. Smashing rocks with apparently, your bare hands. Apparently, Romu is evolving into Geodude. <laughs> Geodude. Uh, anywho, well, uh, for this week, we don't have a guest because, well, I'm at a convention. And like I stated before, I'm here to meet with Andy Price and try to get him on the show. And he and his wife are awesome. Alice Price is a really nice person. Got to talk to her a lot. And Andy Price, he works really hard. Oh, James, Andy and Alice said they liked a movie slate. You're joking. Nope. <laughs> they said that OC is really creative. Wait, 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 wait. They actually know of movie slate. I showed it to them. You know, um, the buttons, I gave them uh, bu- the buttons to them. And uh. they say that looks awesome. And I showed Alice uh. your Tumblr blog. And she ah. laughed. Ah. Laugh ah. in a good way. Like, uh, ah. it was funny. <laughs> no. What? I, I, no. Ah. Ah. Don't do that, Norman. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the same person I, noticing you. <laughs> no. Piss off. I don't want to be noticed. Ah. <laughs> I, mean, I think I, I need. <laughs> <laughs> I was swallowing some, my my saliva just went the other way and I'm choking my lungs. That's not a word. What the hell, Norman? No, don't do that. Oh, God. Uh, Now I'm going to have to be scouting the background to see if they put movies late on there somewhere. (laughs) Jesus. Don't do that. No. (laughs) Too late. Seriously speaking, I doubt they, I doubt they will even do that. I, come on. Well, if they do, it would be fun, like her in the background. (laughs) If they're going to put an OC in their comics, it's more likely going to be one of the popular ones, like yeah, yeah, Ask yeah. Pump Pony or something like that. Yeah, yeah probably. Easier to draw as well. True, true. Well, we'll see, we'll see. So for this week, we don't have any guests because, well, I'm at the convention and trying to plan something out is going to be really hard. So uh, uh, Nobody likes us and we're smelly. So, uh, no, yeah. no, no. Andy Price and Alice Price likes you. They like movie slate. Shut up. <laughs> if you don't, if I can hear you, it doesn't happen. If I can hear you, it didn't happen. Nah, nah, no, don't. Okay, but anywho, um, um, to make this short, this is going to be one of those episodes where we're just derping and talking about the news. So, <laughs> yeah, wrong. This is short. <laughs> oh, is it bedtime already? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> read us your, what should we call this, news time? In today's news time, Dave Polsky reaction to a negative question. On last week's episode, we talked about Dave Polsky's panel at Buck and how he presented it to the audience. During his Q&A, one of the audience members asked Dave a question in rather rude manner. To know what happened, click on the show notes to check out the video. Yeah, so I've seen the video with its annotation and apparently the kid has some kind of uh, social disorder or something like that. Maybe Who knows? social anxiety. Who knows? You know what? No, I'm going to call... That's not a word! ...on that right now. That is not an excuse. I know people who have social anxiety that don't have that level of 
rudeness, lack of education, and manners. You cannot go to someone and say, oh, I don't like you, you have an ugly face, and please do not insult me because I'm autistic. That is being a... That's not a word. That is not being autistic. That is being a... That's not a word. Okay, I don't care if you have a social disorder. That guy was acting like an, like an absolute jerk. He got what he deserved. Well, I, I didn't think he got what he deserved. The, the reaction was pretty... Mm, okay blend from the audience at Buck, from what I can tell. The audience basically applauded what Dave Polsky was saying, and they were too appalled by the behavior of this guy to even react negatively to it. They were like, are you serious? Are you, are you, are you really doing this? Yeah, but still, it, it, it was interesting to see that it went that way. Rob, anything to add on to this? Was it the guy that was trying to prove his canon? Yeah, yeah, he was basically he was basically right. trying to explain why will Twilight Sparkle be a teacher when the CMCs don't need a teacher or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe the wrong teacher or something like that. Something like that in that manner, probably. Well, what can you say? You got your smart people, you got your silly people, and you got your people with no education. Let's put it this way. Yeah, that is the problem. And yeah, that guy like- had zero levels of education. Yeah, I mean, I've been a customer service. I can understand Polsky in this, you know, situation. He's like, complain to a computer he's broken, and like, there's no way to fix it. And, you know, it's uh, I understand him. I'm totally with Polsky. Handled himself like a boss. He acted like a complete professional. And like I said uh, on last week's episode, if I had been him, I would have walked. I would have left. He did look like he wanted to get out of there and be somewhere else. But the way he acted, it was really professional, and it was really awesome of him. He acted way better than, than others should have. He gave that kid the respect and, and education that the kid didn't deserve. But that's Dave Polsky. He acted like that because he is that kind of person. He's down to earth. Down to earth. Yeah. Is the way I used to describe him. Oh, I agree. I agree. That he was really awesome. And it's hard to argue with that. So moving on to the next news, Rom. Equestria Girls Rainbow Rock soundtrack to be released on September 9th. Equestria Girls Rainbow's Rocks is going to be released in theaters on September 27th. And to get us hype, Hasbro has officially announced that they will release the Equestria Girls Rainbow Rock soundtrack on iTunes on September 9th. All the songs are composed by Daniel Ingram, and there will be a total of 12 songs in the soundtrack. Check out the show notes for more information. I love the songs that they've done. Well, they announced three or four songs that have been released officially, and I like them all. (laughs) It's really cool. Music to my ears is my favorite. I wonder if they're going to put that one in. Let me double check. If they don't, I will be extremely upset. What do you think, James? Will you buy it? What do I think? Really like the first movie, though, and at one point it felt like they were cramming the songs in there for no good reason whatsoever. Like, there was uh, one scene in the movie where there is a song... Literally two minutes later, there's another one. No pacing, no nothing. It's just, ah, let's cram as many songs as possible. I hope they don't do the same thing with the second movie, although the second movie looks like it's going to be just uh, a downright pure musical. And, well, this is kind of a high school musical kind of deal. <laughs> so it's going to be song and dance and, like, I don't know. It's, it can be fun, but... Let's see what they do. Let's see what they do with this. We'll just have to wait and see. Indeed, indeed. So, James, what do you think, man? Like, will you buy it out or something like that? Well, if they say that they're going to mix both old and new uh, songs, that kind of gives gives me hope in that we are not going to have, like, 12 songs crammed into a 70-minute-long 70, 70 movie. Uh, that would be crazy. Because if it's like if each song is like five minutes long, okay, let's say each each song is like five minutes long, it's going to be like sixty minutes just singing with no story, no nothing, unless you know the the, the songs move the story forward. Mm, true, true. Uh, or no character moments or anything like that, which is pretty much what I think most of the people that are into the show or the movie uh, enjoy. I am not. Sure, though, anymore, because the first time that uh, Rainbow Rocks was announced was the music to my ears uh, uh, clip. 
Yeah. That was awesome. I think I think they they put the bar up too high oh. with uh, that one. Then they released the the other shorts like the Rainbow Dash one, the Rarity one, the Pinkie Pie one, the Fluttershy one, one after the other. And it was like, yeah, this is actually this this could be fun. This can work. But now with all the previews and all that that they're putting forward, I am like, how are they going to put all of this and the songs and make it like work? Well, I don't know. I mean, from what I can tell. There's a story behind it, which is really interesting. But from how they s- cut it, it's really confusing. First, it was the girls going to do some kind of battle of the band kind of situation. And then there's sunset. And then suddenly there's the sirens. The one thing that concerns me is how are they going to put Twilight Sparkle in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- th- that's not a thing. How is Twilight going to get there? Because for the looks of this, is like... This is like the 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 one clip where Flash Sentry shows up and he's like, "Hey, are we gonna have somebody else coming in?" And then they are like, "Uh, not really. The portal was closed, and I don't think that it's gonna open again." So, what are they actually going to do? How are they going to get Twilight in there? Is is she going to go like through a solar flare or something like that, or uh, how is she going to teleport back to the world of Car- Canterlot High? Like, I'm pretty sure they will figure out a way, but for the way that they are presenting, uh, at this point, we were going, we, for the first movie, I don't know if you remember this, but we already had the first five minutes released. Yeah, yeah. We saw the ponies going to Christ- the Crystal Empire and all that. We knew about all those things. And they kind of established how it was going to work out. Okay. How are they going to do it in this one, though? They are focusing a lot on just the humans, uh, the human characters. Well, I think it's already established that uh, Equestria Girls is slowly based on that. What I'm interested in is what are they going to focus on? Because, well, to me, Sunset Shimmer is kind of the key star here. Like, even without Twilight, the show will be awesome because, well, you're developing a character that we all kind of are interested in. Like sunset, you don't really need Twilight Sparkle. You don't need the main character. This is something that Hasbro is very used to do. I don't know if you remember, but when the first Transformers movie was released, and I'm talking about the animated one, okay, they killed off the Opti- Optimus Prime, and when they returned to the show, Optimus Prime was still dead, and that's because they were releasing other new line of toys, and Optimus Prime wasn't part of it. So they, that's why they decided to kill him. So, in the same way that, uh, that, uh, perhaps, perhaps Rainbow Rocks should have focused just solely on Sunset Shimmer. Sunset Shimmer should be the protagonist of the show. She is the Twilight Sparkle of, uh, Equestria Girls. Yeah. In that she doesn't know friendship, she doesn't know anything. She's a redeeming villain. She has a much more interesting character arc than any of the other characters. Uh, because, it's for the sole fact that she actually does have a character arc. I mean, the other, uh, the other main six in human form, they don't have any character arc whatsoever. They don't have any conflict. Pinkie Pie doesn't have a conflict. Rainbow Dash doesn't have a conflict. Uh, Applejack doesn't have one, no, nor Fluttershy. Perhaps the one with the most, uh, uh idea for, for a conflict will be Fluttershy. But yeah. that's because she always has the same thing going on for her. The whole, oh, I had, I don't have a spine. I'm going to develop a spine through the process of the story. And then at the end of the story, I'm going to forget that I have a spine. And then I'm going to go back to the next episode and have another spine, uh, having to look for a spine again. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know. I, I, yeah. do, I, I kind of agree with you, but, and I do want them to focus on sunset. But the point of the, ma- or the fact of the matter is, it's marketing. They need to have Twilight there or else it won't sell. It's, you don't it's really need to. I know. They, you don't they really. Don't, they don't really. You don't need really. To. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's, no, no, no. It's like marketing wise. You know why we got Princess Cadence, right? Yeah, because they want a pink alicorn toy. Yeah, her. and they wanted to sell white alicorn Celestia, so they needed a pink alicorn princess. So they had to, they had to uh, bring Cadence out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of the point. But it okay. Going back to your thing about Transformers, after they killed off Optimus Prime, there was a lot of backlash. A lot of backlash from the fans who were really angry about it. Yeah, but that didn't stop Hasbro from co- bringing back Optimus Prime in an episode as a zombie, just to have him get killed off again. And then just uh, for the fi- for the uh, finale of the series, they bring back Optimus Prime like full on. 
Yeah, I mean, but still, they brought him back. That's the thing. They yeah, him yeah, back. but I mean, in this day and age that the internet work makes it, uh, makes everything work faster, it took them a bit more to get that kind of feedback and realize, yeah. oh, wait well, I a minute, mean, guys, there is a backlash about the show. We need to do something about this. Yeah, and with ponies being um, instantaneous with how the internet is, they kind of knew what was going on and learned from the mistakes. You really need to think that this is still marketed to children. And children want to see their heroes, uh, and they want to see them all the time. It is true that we cannot remove Twilight out of the equation, because Twilight is the character that has been in the show and in the movies mm-hmm. uh, the most. I mean, she is the protagonist. The story is all about her, uh, except for those episodes where she's not in there. And that, that, but that doesn't necessarily have make her uh, uh, something that can be expended. She's not expendable. She needs to be there. Yeah. She needs to be present in the story some one way or another. True. I don't know. I mean, it's one of the situations where I wish them uh, luck with this one because I know I'm going to enjoy it. It's one, it's one of your thing where Guardians of the Galaxy, even it sucks, it's going to be awesome kind of deal. I I am taking my other route with this movie in that I am I, I am taking the route of I don't know what is going to happen. I am seeing the clips, but I am not hyping whatsoever. Okay. And Rom, what about you? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. I need to see the movie before I can make any judgments or statements or whatever. All right. Cool. Cool. The trailers look nice. I'll give them that. So yeah, this might be interesting. How it's going to turn out, I don't know. As for Twilight Sparkle's appearance, let's make a bet. I think Doctor Who is going to take his TARDIS <laughs> and put to the other world. <laughs> oh God. Uh, no. But yeah, it could it. happen. Probably. <laughs> but anywho, um, I guess that's the news for this week. I'm Norman Well with the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thanks, Rom. And well, like I said, this is going to be a short episode. So next topic is shout outs. So my shout out is to you guys. Thank you for coming on and dealing with my derps. I'm really sorry that I am derping really hard. I think everyone's derping this weekend. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm really it's one sorry of those days. It. Yeah, I'm really sorry cool. about that, man. Cool. And also to Andy Price and Alice Price. Thank you for coming here and thank you for being awesome. I bought a lot of prints. I am going bankrupt. <laughs> no. <laughs> and also to the Singaporean bronies and some of the old MBS show hosts. Thank you for meeting up with me and playing some games. It was awesome. And James, what about you, man? Well... Uh, my shout out goes to the guys that are in the stream right now because they're super loyal. They're co- they're cool. They're fine. And uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here right now. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. I want to give a shout out to Norman because despite him being um jerky face who bothers me with stupid calls because oh, I don't have a guest this week, James. Come banter with me about stupid news that I have seen in the Christmas daily, doggy. Uh, <laughs> He's a good guy with a good heart, and I uh, I love his personality and how well he takes every time that I abuse him. Uh, because let's be honest, people sometimes I get very vindictive with the guy, but it's all because I love him. Um, <laughs> oh my god! And and I uh, one last shout out to uh, Romy because uh, the same, oh, almost the same thing. Because oh my god, you with your potatoes and your Markiplier, let's get to sleep, boys. Uh, <laughs> you're I'm still. Markiplier. You're still a funny guy. You are totally Markiplier. I'm not Markiplier. <laughs> you are so him. Oh, oh god, my god. No. Totally are. You totally are. It's unbelievable. <laughs> no problem. Well, well, Mark, I mean, Rom, what, what about you? Shout outs. Hi, mom. Uh, just mom. N- n- nothing to say to the thousand of audience that you accumulated through your let's play of five days at Freddy. I am not Markiplier. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what you keep saying. <laughs> that's what you keep saying. <laughs> Indeed. Gosh <laughs> darn, fellas. Well, with that, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can email us at mbsshow at gmail.com. Also, you can reach us on Twitter. Um, the Twitter will be in the show notes, but the MBS Show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. So the bot will kind of blame me on this episode because I'm the one derping, not James. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I did and, drop a couple of f bombs. Should the bot is gonna be censoring all day long? Yeah, but she's gonna be more mad at me than you. <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> yeah, and also you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. At Norman Sanzo, I'll be posting pictures of con cosplayers and whatever because they're awesome. And James, what about you? What do you mean me? Um, sh- how can they reach you? Uh, they, you cannot reach me. I live in Spain. Get away from me. <laughs> how about reaching you via the internet? You can check me on Twitter, although nobody follows me on Twitter, but it's uh, James uh, underscore Cork. You can check my DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com and you can go to my movie slate Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome. And Rom? You can find me at relicious.dvnr.com or my Tumblr, iamrelicious.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook. You can also listen to us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been a very derpy Norman Sanzo. I am Romuald. And I have been James Cork. And... James, Andy Price said movie slate was awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, that's what you're saying. I'm pretty sure that's a lie. <laughs> nope, they say. I'm pretty sure awesome. he said. He said. I'm pretty sure he said. Oh, that's a very silly movie, Pony. And then he just tossed it the, the badge away. <laughs> it fell on a trash can with the adagio for strings playing. <laughs> it was like the end of Platoon. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next week, and I'm gonna prove you wrong, James. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Laters. Adios. You can find me at the orchard. You can find me working all down the day. You know I ain't got much to say, but it don't matter anyway. You don't need words to run a farm. Some may call. Prove you wrong, but I've been bugging all day long. About that time I get on home. Cause I got two girls counting on me to be the best that I can be. Letting them down to be the worst thing coming. So I got no time for anything other than a little bit of apple bucking. So if you'll kindly let me be. I got some work ahead of me. Sun. I'm not one for fame and glory. Yeah, I'm fine with my hooves not being clean. Cause the place where I should be is right here with my family. And that won't change till the day I die. I got two girls counting on me to be the best that I can be. ahead of me mm-hmm. got some work ahead of me oh yeah I got some work ahead of me are you serious? is this actually the end of the podcast? yes yep Really? Yeah. Yes. My God, this is ridiculous. You got me in here, bothered me with a Skype call and everything. Yes, for the... <laughs> uh, it's just one of those days, man. It happens. It's a very, very chill Saturday, which is weird. I'm not used to this kind of days. My days have been I very frantic. 
having a bit of calm, it's kind of odd. 